Hello and welcome to my next tutorial Prepamax. This tutorial is a special one for two reasons. First of all, as you can see, Prepamax reached version 2 uh, and now Gmesh is supported, including hex meshing, which I will show in uh, some of the next uh, tutorials. And there are also, of course, uh, some other changes, but uh, Gmesh support is the main one. And the second reason why this tutorial is special is that I recently defended my PhD thesis and I would like to present something related to it. So basically, I will show you uh, the fundamentals of oxetic materials and uh, structures. So um, let me create a new model first and uh, I will import the geometry and you will see uh, what will be what we are going to uh, analyze uh, in this tutorial. As you can see the geometry is quite simple uh, it's a single uh, oxetic unit cell and oxidicity here means that uh, basically those materials and structures have negative Poisson's ratio. Uh, so if you are familiar with Poisson's ratio, uh, you know that it's a ratio of uh, basically strains in, in two directions. And uh, regular materials behave in a common way, so if you uh, compress them they become uh, thicker and if you stretch them they become thinner uh, while for oxetics it's in the, it works in the opposite way so if you stretch the oxetic material or structure uh, it becomes thicker and if you uh, compress it it becomes uh, thinner so mm, in completely opposite manner and you will see how it works on, on this simple mm, structure B because for, for a case like this and uh, this could represent a microstructure of a foam for example su such a unit cell and uh, then thanks to the shape uh, to, to the angle of those ribs uh, it will deform in such a way that it will behave in oxetic manner. Uh, so um, let's create a mesh first. Uh, I will prepare the mesh setup. You can see that in this new version of Prepomex there are different settings for meshing. So we have everything listed as setup items, mesh setup items, and there you have the previously available meshing parameters, mesh refinement, but also uh, several options for G-mesh meshing. So you have shell, tetrahedral, transfinite, L extrude, and revolve mesh. Those can be used to, to create hexahedral meshes, and I will cover them later. Uh, but uh, for now we will use shell gmesh and first I want to define uh, some meshing parameters. So I will select this part as always and I will specify the maximum element size which will be uh, free in this case and I will leave the rest with the default settings. So I can confirm this and now I will add, add another mesh setup item and this will be shell gmesh because uh, we will use uh, shell uh, meshing with gmesh as a mesher. And uh, this option is very important here because recombination allows you to create uh, quad meshes and which then can be also extruded or evolved to, to uh, hexahedral meshes but in this case we are talking about surface meshes so uh, this is just to create a quad surface mesh instead of the default uh, triangular mesh because if I hit preview now without the recombination you will see that the mesh consists of triangles and if I select some recombination algorithm let's use the, the first one so simple and now you will see that we only have uh, quad elements so mm, this is what we want in this case I can also tell you that even though it was also possible to create quad meshes before using uh, the mesher available in, in, in Prepomex before the Gmesh implementation but I, I f from what I've noticed the Gmesh shell mesher can be uh, better it, it can generate uh, quad meshes uh, in more cases than, than the previous mesher so uh, I would recommend this at, at least here uh, it's more uh, robust uh, so uh, let's confirm this and now I'll create the mesh and you can see that we have uh, mesh consisting only of quad elements. We can also confirm this, go to uh, the mesh, uh, the part settings, and here if, the, the, if there were any triangles, they would be listed here with their type. So uh, here we can access the, the type of the element. All right. Uh, so, of course, we are using uh, shell elements. And now uh, let's hide the mesh and proceed to the analysis setup. The setup of this analysis will be really simple. Uh, it's just to show the uh, pr principle of uh, how the oxetics actually work. Uh, so the, the analysis itself won't be really complicated. Uh, but uh, let's create a new material first. First, and of course uh, this will be uh, material with common properties of steel. No need to uh, use anything else in this case. And I will also apply a section. This will be a shell section applied to the whole part. Uh, so uh, I have to select all the uh, faces and then I just need to set the thickness. I will use three millimeters in this case. I can confirm this. And now uh, I have the um, uh, section defined. So let's uh, create a new analysis step. This will be just a static step with the default settings. And now uh, I need to create boundary conditions. Uh, so uh, the first one will be fixed. And I will select the bottom face here. Uh, I want the, the face to be fixed in, in this direction. Uh, or actually in all directions, but, but I want to be this face to be uh, fully fixed. Uh, so and this is the, the first boundary condition. And then 
or or maybe even let's do it in, in this way uh, so let's select this and let's see like this uh, so uh, basically and now let's uh, add another boundary condition and this will be displacement rotation i will apply it to the top of the uh, unit cell and there i just want to prescribe uh, displacement so this will be uh, minus one millimeter so we are going to compress this unit cell and we will see how it behaves uh, if it behaves in expected or unexpected manner and uh, the only thing left is i want to define history output node output and i want to uh, request uh, displacement uh, for this uh, uh, point here or somewhere here or uh, actually it doesn't really matter i could also use um, uh, another point like, like this one but uh, let's maybe uh, show the mesh and pick this point maybe this point here uh, to uh, save the displacement all right so mm, i have it uh, prepared and now i can uh, submit the analysis and we will check the results all right the results are available now so let's open them and now uh, we can see the deformation of the unit cell but to make it more clear uh, i will go to uh, tools settings and now uh, in post processing options i will choose different uh, setting for undeformed model so i will select wireframe body and i will confirm this and now maybe let's change the view and um, here you will be able to see what actually happens to this part so of course this wireframe representation with expanded thickness so that's why you see those strange connections uh, but basically this is the um, undeformed uh, representation undeformed part and then uh, the colored one is, is the deformed part uh, we could also uh, avoid this expansion and, and seeing only the mid surfaces this is the, the setting that I probably showed you in one of the previous tutorials, but you can do it here. So you can switch to, to the uh, output, but it's really not so important. So in this case, so, so mm, let's just leave it like this. And now uh, if we uh, check the, uh, the formation, we can also, of course, run an animation. And now you will see how this uh, structure actually behaves. So when we, as you can see, well, when we compress the structure, uh, it actually becomes uh, thinner, not thicker. Uh, so this is the auxetic behavior that that we are observing. In this case of a simple unit cell, it's nothing really, uh, let's say, is so unexpected because if you think about this, the shape of the structure, the geometry, then it's quite obvious that this will deform in this way. But those unit cells are basically the um, fundamentals of, of auxetics and how they actually work in practice. And for example, those could form uh, unit cells of some folds, for example, as, as, as I said, they could ap approximately have this shape and, and then thanks to that, that the behavior could be auxetic. Uh, so this is just a presentation of a s simple model of, of such an auxetic structure. But uh, let's mm, also and check that the, as always let's, let's verify the results using uh, hand calculations uh, so that's why maybe let, let me uh, disable this uh, representation and uh, now and that's why i uh, saved those displacements uh, so uh, let's check the uh, x displacement as I, uh, as you remember this this was the node right here and uh, we are checking the x displacement so we want to uh, check the horizontal displacement i can uh, copy this and uh, this value right here and now I will go to, to my uh, calcpad uh, document and uh, here I have some calculations already made. So uh, the first part is analytical calculations based on, on this book. And it's a simple formula that allows you to calculate the uh, Poisson's ratio or actually effective Poisson's ratio because we're talking about not material Poisson's ratio because as, uh, as you can see, uh, I entered uh, regular Poisson's ratio here, uh, just 0 0.3. I could enter also uh, minus 0 0.3, for example, uh, but then uh, or other uh, negative value, but uh, then it would mean that I'm hom solving homogenized structure. So I could, for example, create a model of a uh, rectang rectangle or uh, a cuboid or something like this and uh, assign negative Poisson's ratio and then it would actually um, be homogenized auxetic but in this case we are modeling the structure itself so the Poisson's ratio can be regular and this could actually be made of steel or anything else uh, you could 3d print it for example and check how it behaves and even though it's made of regular material it behaves like auxetic because of the shape of the structure so that's that's how it really works and um, as i said this is effective Poisson's ratio uh, so the, the formula looks like this uh, and uh, we have some negative value obtained for for this unit cell uh, using those Param ge geometric parameters and now we are going to compare it with the simulation result um, for the simulation we just need uh, some inputs uh, so 
basically here where you see the zero I, I'm going to enter the displacement that, ju that I just found in Prepomax here I have the prescribed displacement then I have the width and uh, height of the, of the unit cell and then we have the calculations for, for the strains and of course the effective Poisson's ratio so uh, let me replace the zero with the value that I just uh, obtained from Prepomax I will just delete this unnecessary part and uh, here you will see uh, the value of this uh, Poisson's ratio that uh, that is going to be uh, pretty much the same as, as the analytical, uh, analytically calculated one. So we can see that we have perfect agreement, uh, at least in this case, uh, for this simple calculation estimation of, of the effective Poisson's ratio. And then this, this one is, of course, from, from just the geometry. It's the equation derived from, from uh, simple uh, relations. And then we have uh, this as a result of the simulation. Uh, but that's not everything that I want to show you today uh, because this is just a single unit cell and I would also like you to show you um, part of the oxidic structure because normally those unit cells form larger structures and those larger structures can be analyzed in various other ways. Uh, so for example here you can see uh, that we have a uh, whole structure consisting of those um, oxidic uh, reentrant. Re actually this is the name of this uh, structure unit cells. And then if you look at the deformation pattern, you can see that, again, we have this oxidic behavior, so we are compressing this structure. And uh, this part is, is going to the left, so it's actually uh, getting uh, thinner, uh, even though we are compressing it. So this is opposite to, to what you would normally expect. Let me just uh, disable this representation here. And you can look at the whole uh, structure. I can also, of course, show you uh, the boundary condition because they are quite different in this case. Uh, so here you can see that we have uh, symmetry on this side. Uh, so and those are the, the symmetry conditions. And then we also have uh, some uh, symmetry at the bottom. And uh, then the, the, le the right side is, is free to deform. And he here we could, for example, measure some, some displacements and strains and to, to do sim similar calculations like, like before. And then, of course, I have the prescribed displacement. This time is a bit larger. And uh, here we have the results. Everything else is pretty much the same, including the thickness and, th and so on. So um, this is what it looks like. And I also have a non oxetic structure. So this, this one is a very common one. I guess that you all know it because it's a hexagonal honeycomb, a very uh, typical structure found pretty much everywhere. This, of course, this is just a part of it. Uh, and again, if you look at the deformation, I can also animate it, of course, you can see that we are compressing it and it's going uh, to the right. So it's becoming thicker uh, when it's compressed. So this is the normal behavior that uh, you can expect in when deforming regular structures. I can also uh, disable this representation here. And of course, the boundary conditions are equivalent to, to those that uh, you could see in the previous previous model. Uh, so this is the regular uh, hexagonal honeycomb. So actually, it's really easy to, to go from one to the other because this is just about the uh, angle between those ribs. So if you change this angle here, you can easily, uh, let's say, drag it and, and create uh, hexagonal honeycomb cell equivalent to the reentrant one. That, that's why it's easy to compare those structures. Uh, this is not what I've done in, in my thesis, of course, because uh, my thesis covered much more complex uh, scenarios and actually it was about even different oxidic structures, but, but also um, about different uh, form of behavior. It was about uh, impact uh, resistance and uh, sandwich structures, so, so totally different topics, but I just wanted to show you some fundamentals about uh, oxidics that are, I would say, still rather uncommon, uh, but it's good to know uh, that they exist and uh, can be sometimes even found in practice. Not, not so commonly uh, still, but maybe in the future you will see more oxetics being used in, in practice. Uh, for now, they are mainly the topic of research in, in various ways, but they can be really uh, interesting, I would say. Uh, they have some unique properties, not only when it comes to this uh, static deformation, but also in dynamics and, and some other uh, scenarios, they, they can respond in totally different ways and they can be superior in, in, various, uh, in various ways. All right, uh, that's it for this performance tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.